as stable as I needed to, right? I'm in it. Got it? So eventually, I want to get to that fluidity. First one is one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And that's where I want to get to. Let's just start off. The easiest way to start off with a corkscrew is this. If you don't have a crossover like this, corkscrews are not for you. Got it? Same thing going backwards. If you don't know how to cross over like this, cross are not for you. Solid? Cool. All right. Now, we don't have to be, we don't have to be this tight. But, ah, 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 ah. but if you don't know how to step back or step over, you can't get past step one. Step two is going here and then pivoting 45 degrees. Whichever foot is in front is on its heel. Every foot is in back, it's on his toe. You guys choose and decide. I can give you, this is my pro tip for you, all right? I am more comfortable on my right foot, so my right foot is in the back. Why? Because my right foot is on his toe, all right? So if I'm doing a heel-toe spin, I'm spinning to my right. And I'm gonna show you guys in the rookie state, if I was a rookie doing it, you'll see me compass uh, compassing my right foot like this. See that? That's what I'm doing when I'm court screwing. My right foot's behind, and instead of me going to the right, which untangles me, I'm gonna go to the left, but I'm still on my right foot. That's my stable foot. My right foot is more stable. I want more pressure on my right foot than my front foot. The more pressure I have on my front foot, it's gonna be harder for me to make this core screw happen. So keep that in mind. So if your core screw is not getting around much, it's because most of your pressure is on the foot in the front. Switch the pressure to the foot in the back, whoever's on his toe, and you'll get around a lot more, right? Because again, I'm compassing around that foot that's in the back. I'm compassing around that foot that's in the back. Got me? Now that's not always going to happen. Sometimes, sometimes when you course through, both feet are going to move evenly. Got it? But either evenly or the foot in the back, one of the two. If you do put it on the foot in the front, you can still hold it, but you're going to fall out of it, right? Your course through can still hold, but you're eventually going to fall out of it. So for me, it's right foot in the back. But for my right-handers, it's more than likely. And again, we have unicorns, so don't. This is not anal. But it's probably going to be your left foot in the back because your left foot, again, if you ever play kickball, you're going to kick with your right, but your left foot is your stable foot. So now let's get to it. Let's end up explaining that. So from this point right here, the angle that your feet are in is a duck footed state, but it's not as deep. Got it? Duck footed state is not as deep because it's going to make, and I explain every time we spin, it's better to spin pigeon toe. Then duck foot it. Duck foot it is a gather. That's me gathering, unless you're doing it heel toe. Heel toe spins like this can work out. But when you're spinning toe toe, it's a duck foot state. I mean, a pigeon toe state. So we want the same thing with a corkscrew. We want to emulate that state by being duck footed across. Now, when I'm duck footed across, what's going to happen is I want the edges that I'm spinning on to be as close to each other as possible. So in other words, again, me spinning like a, a right-hander with my left foot over, I'm showing you from this view right here, I don't want my right foot to be up here and my left foot to be back here and me trying to court screw like this. I don't want that because it's going to whack me out. And I don't want for my feet to be lined up evenly. I don't want that because I'm not going to be able to get around. What I need, I need the design of this. I need my right foot or the foot that's in the front where my back edge is to be right next to the back foot's front edge, almost lined up. So when I spin and course through, they're going to still be angled in a pigeon toe state, right? But they're right next to each other. They, they are right next to each other. Like so. The foot that's in the front is my driver. 
That's your power foot. That's a foot that's going to get around. It's going to be driving. Like it goes, the, t- the back foot goes where that front foot goes. But in the back is my car. It keeps me as stable as I need it to. Right? I'm in it. Got it? Cool. Now, again, we don't need to go around. All we need to do is hit this 90. So now, your next task is you have your angle, you have your concept. My knees, my back knee is touching. I mean, my left knee is touching the back of my right knee. I, is that how you say it? Because knee is up here. That's not a knee, right? So that's the joint. Anyway, get into that other stuff. So I'm right here, and what I want to do is I'm resting this knee on this the back of this um, knee that's in the front. And so when I go around, upper body leads to make this turn happen. I turn, and I scoop. Just like that. I am not trying to do it in a synchronized situation right now. But not synchronized. Synchronized is either or. Like I, I'm not trying to do them simultaneously. Let me say it like that. I'm trying to do them where it's a one, I'm already here. All I gotta do is twist at my hips. Find that balance, got me? Cool, once I have that, the next step is this, one, two. And I'm going to do 90, but the reason why I'm doing 90 is not so that way I can understand how to do it at, I wanna try to sync them up a little bit better. Got it? So now, when I do one, two, I wanna be a little bit more fluid. One, two, one. You see that? So eventually I want to get to that fluidity. First one is one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And that's where I want to get to. You guys get that? You guys will be flowing before you know it. Or right, before you know it. Now, the next step. Once I have that, I want to start doing and owning this quarter turn. Ha. Got it? Once I own that, I want to own both sides. If that felt good, let me try this side. Ha. That felt good, too. All right, we good. What does the upper body look like? Me, I'm in this state right here. I call it the JB state. JB state is state right here in this range, right? So I'm in this state right here. So I turn, twist. Hey, it's almost like... It's almost like I have a countertop right here, right? We have a countertop right here. I'm going to grab the countertop. Let's say I'm twisting to my left and my left foot over in the front. I'm going to grab the countertop and I'm going to twist it. Yeah. Twist me with the countertop. That's the illusion I want to give you. I'm going to go here, grab the countertop. All right, cool. Now you own that, right? That's easy. We got that. Cool, we got 30 minutes left. This is good. So we got that ownership. Now, the next step is this. I want to get it where I can do it and pull out or step into the next course screw, right? So this is training tip number one for um, conditioning both sides. Looks like this. I'm going to go left over right, twist and twist. Right over left, twist and twist. Got it? Notice that I didn't go left over right, twist, step, out, step, over, right? You guys are either past that or if you're not to that point yet, make sure that you guys have enough balance. It's very important to have the balance where you can stop, shift your weight over that foot that's in the front and step back over with that foot or shift your weight to that foot that's in the back, step behind that foot. You see what I'm saying? So let me, let me show you guys both ways. Foot over, hit, turn, hit. Foot over, hit, turn, hit. Over, boom, boom, over, boom, boom. Notice now I'm doing a small strut. Got it? And this right here, if you guys did this at the rink, I'm telling you right now, they were like, oh my God, you got so much skills. Oh my God, please show me, teach me your ways. You see how simple that is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is so smooth right there by itself. Got it? But what I want you to make sure you do, whatever foot's in front, we're turning towards that side. Left foot's in front. Let me turn this way. All right, do it with me. 
Left foot's in front. Bounce and make that pivot. Yeah. Got it? Right foot now is in front. Bounce and make that pivot. Boom. Left foot, bounce, pivot, right foot, bounce, pivot. Left foot, bounce, pivot, right foot, bounce, pivot. Got that? Now, this is what's going to happen with a lot of the course rules. If you're not to the 90 yet, don't do the 90. Do the 45. And then come back 45. 45. Back 45. Okay? Now, that's what's going forward. Well, stepping back is a little different. When I step back, it's here. Boom. Back. Boom. It takes a little bit more focus and concentration because now you're putting yourself in a state. And don't do that one fast until you guys get comfortable with the other one first. Because now you put, you're put in the state to throw your weight back. You guys all know how I don't like for you to throw your weight back because it puts you where you may fall. But you got to sit down more. So you twist, sit down, twist. Got it? So that's that one. And my wife is calling me. All right. Now, this, this next one goes like this. Once I have that, I want to pull out. Twist and pull out. Left foot twist. And then pull out. Got it? And then from there, I'm going to pivot that foot in the front. Or pivot on his toe, but pivot that heel in. And then bring them together. 